Well, folks, today you're getting a two-pack video here from me. Obviously, earlier we talked about Nintendo Switch 2, but we have a really big story that's been breaking over the last couple of hours, and uh, this is massive. You see, Nintendo hates emulation. That's no surprise. They go after ROM sites. They go after emulators, and one emulator they went after a long time ago and actually won and now own all the rights to and everything was a Nintendo Switch emulator. A very, very popular one, but it kind of got itself in trouble in the U.S. because it was putting itself, despite being an open source, uh, like the latest versions were behind like a Patreon paywall. And yeah, you can't do that, right? That means you're making money off of creating a piece of software to emulate pirated video games. And I understand that you can legally dump your own copies of games and all that. I'm not here to get into like all the legalities of like actually emulating games uh, because game emulation for the most part has been like defended in the US. It's pretty well known you can emulate games. You can't pirate games. That's two different things. Emulating and pirating are two different things. Pirating is illegally downloading a ROM file you do not own. Uh, whereas emulating, technically you can dump any f of your own ROM files and just play them. But Nintendo was able to nab that emulator in the US specifically because they were charging money. So they were profiting off of making something that was able to play Nintendo's games and providing like keys that you need to actually like decrypt games. It was a whole mess of stuff and they kind of got themselves in trouble and everyone sort of knew it. Well, there was always another Nintendo Switch emulator and that Nintendo Switch emulator was very popular, free to use out there, not behind a paywall, was known as Rijunix or something like that. I might be pronouncing it incorrectly, but the thing was this emulator was not made in the US and Nintendo wasn't going to be able to just go after them through normal means. Well, <laughs> that emulator is no more. It's GitHub repositories are gone. Everything's gone about it. You can still find people with re-uploads of it somewhere. But the point is, it's not going to get any more development work. It was never an open source emulator. So it was never something that had its source code out there for people to just do what they want with. So this one getting deleted is a really big deal because with it getting deleted, it'll never get updated. So even if you can find old versions of it out there, it might not play new Switch games in the future and definitely won't be able to play new Switch 2 games if there happens to be some sort of compatibility there. So Nintendo Nintendo's obviously doing all this and going after these emulators because they want them gone before Switch 2 comes out. Because if there's backwards compatibility and a lot of stuff, this could open up vulnerabilities that could actually enable Switch 2 games to be emulated much quicker. So Nintendo just wants to eliminate Switch emulators off the face of the earth. Now, to all you pirates out there and hackers, you'll know that, hey, look, it's sort of a losing battle for Nintendo to do this. But taking out the two most popular ones, there isn't a lot of other options out there right now for Switch emulation. There really isn't. Nothing that's actually reliable anyways. So let's go ahead and see what happened. Uh, we got this posted by Oatmeal Dome over on Twitter. And he says, Roger Nix, a Nintendo Switch emulator, has ceased development. The lead developer was pressured by Nintendo of America into shutting down the project. All downloads and the GitHub repositories have been removed. Here is from the Discord server for uh, Roger Nix. It says, uh, yesterday, GDK Chan was contacted by Nintendo and offered an agreement to stop working on the project, remove the organization and all related assets he's in control of. While awaiting confirmation on whether he would take this agreement, the organization has been removed. So I think it's safe to say what the outcome is. Essentially, the guy who created it took Nintendo's offer. Um, so there's the, the, there's there's that. Like he he's removing everything because Nintendo basically paid him off, is what it sounds like. Rather than leave you with only panic and speculation, I decided to write this short message to give some closure. These words are my own. I don't want to speak for anyone else here, so just remember that while reading. Thank you to everyone who has contributed code, documentation, or issue reports to the project. Thank you all for following us throughout the development. I was able to learn a lot of really neat things about games that I love, enjoy them with renewed qualities and in unique circumstances, and I'm sure you all have experiences that are similarly special. I'm extending my own massive thanks to our moderation team who have been here throughout some rough circumstances and always found ways to make light of it. Now, uh, it just doesn't sound like Nintendo went after them legally. This sounds like uh, they sent someone to deal with it, and that's actually... This is actually uh, something that Pirate Nation, a very popular, uh, you know, content creator out there, live streamer, and just someone who was a game developer for a very long time, worked at Blizzard Entertainment and other places, uh, said that he had actually heard something from an anonymous source. He's going to keep the source anonymous, of course, about what Nintendo actually did. He said, according to an anonymous source, Nintendo's lawyers walked up to the main developer's house in Brazil. So, like, Nintendo 
of America sent lawyers, so basically the Nintendo ninjas, to this person's house and offered him a, de a deal to delete it, which kind of goes along with, you know, what this says here. You know, if you look at this, it says, hey, uh, the Nintendo offered an agreement to stop working on the project. Nintendo, literally, Nintendo of America went to this dude's house in Brazil and made him an offer. And I'm sure the offer was a pretty hefty sum because I don't believe that Rygenix was actually breaking any Brazilian laws. So there probably wasn't like a threat of lawsuits or anything. Uh, so I can't imagine that that's how Nintendo got this to go down. Like threatening, hey, if you don't take this deal, we're going to take you to court. Because I don't think the laws in Brazil would have allowed that. But what I will say is, look, the guy probably is just super passionate about Nintendo. And if he can, at the end of the day, get a big payday from Nintendo, like let's let's say it's in the millions, uh, then you know I'm sure the guy was probably perfectly happy to take that, much at the chagrin of a lot of people online. I don't know if that agreement included Nintendo now owning those assets, because Nintendo does own the other emulator, like they literally own it. They own all the files about it. That's why when you see people bringing up, you know, hey, it was open source, so here's a new version of this open source thing. It's not open source anymore. Nintendo owns the rights, so Nintendo's been just just shot put you know shotgunning all of those things down uh but rajunix was one of those ones that just hey look this is untouchable it's not in the u.s it's also not open source and you know it's a very private thing and yeah nintendo got it taken down whether or not they bought the rights to it that's a whole different thing but the person clearly made an agreement and i'm not mad at the main developer for taking a payday from nintendo to shut things down i don't think that that is uh you know a bad thing look the guy made an emulator and he got paid by nintendo i think in the end a lot of us probably would have just taken that money some of you might have stood on principle and been like no nintendo i will not take that money but remember rajinix wasn't a project that made this guy any money he wasn't making money off of the project so uh for him to get you know probably a several million dollar payday from nintendo probably is a win in his book uh does that mean there'll never be any more switch emulators well of course not we're gonna get see more and more pop up but nintendo's gonna keep trying to get them all shut down if they can't get them shut down you know legally it sounds like they're just gonna offer sums of money that people can't say no to nintendo's a multi-billion dollar company uh the thing is this could actually encourage people to try to make switch emulators to get nintendo this might, have, this might backfire a little bit. People might start to make emulators so Nintendo pays them off. But making a Switch emulator isn't like the easiest thing in the world. That's one reason why there's basically only been two really popular Switch emulators. And so, you know, when you go get the, 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 the Wii U and the 3DS and the, the Wii and the DS, like there's a ton of different emulators, you know, dozens of them for those platforms. But for Switch, it's really just been about the two big ones. Nintendo got the other one legally because they were selling stuff and making money. And now they went after this one and said, look, we're just going to, it's still technically legal, but uh, they went after him legally in that we're just going to pay you to get rid of it. So, uh, look, what does this mean, obviously, for Switch emulation? This is a massive blow to people out there, especially those of you guys that were using Switch emulation legally. I feel for people that were using Switch emulation in a legal way. For those of you that were just pirating video games, I got to say, I don't really give a fly enough, man. All you people playing Echoes of Wisdom early, all you people that play Tears of the Kingdom early, people that plan to be playing Mario Party Jamboree early, which, by the way, you don't need emulators to do it. You can have a hack switch and do it. But the point is that all you people that were just using Using these emulators to illegally play games early man i don't have any sympathy for you all right i get what nintendo's doing nintendo's worried about their next system they're worried about the backwards compatibility aspect they're worried about any vulnerabilities that could come from that that could lead to emulation day one nintendo wants to do everything they can to protect that and while there will be protections in on switch 2 reality is there was always the risk that if nintendo has backwards compatibility with switch that it could open them up to vulnerabilities with emulators those vulnerabilities by the way will probably still exist but with nintendo continually going after the major emulators if they could stop another switch emulator from gaining you know massive popularity then that's going to be a big win in nintendo's book and probably help really cut down on the level of piracy nintendo has dealt with throughout this generation nintendo switch has been maybe the most pirated system not ever, but the most pirated modern day system. And, uh, you know, you can say what we want about legal emulation and all that, but we also have to admit Nintendo Switch has been the most pirated console of this generation. And you could say it's Nintendo's fault for weak hardware or this and that. It doesn't really change the fact that a lot of people are choosing to do illegal things to play Nintendo games without paying for them uh, and playing them early. So uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I... 
I get what Nintendo's doing. Uh, I understand the blow this is to people who were doing things legally, and uh, that sucks for them. But I understand what Nintendo's doing. Like I, I don't really know whose side to be on. I, I feel like I'm kind of neutral here. I don't like that Nintendo did this, but I also understand why they did it or why they felt like they needed to do it. They needed to try to get this taken down because, again, Nintendo has new hardware around the corner. And what if these these emulator people were able to successfully tra transport their emulator to Switch Two games within the first week? That would just, that'd be a huge blow for Nintendo, even if it takes people a while to figure out how to hack the system and dump game files. So, man, I'm just going to sit back and um, see what you guys have to say about this. I think this is something that we absolutely need to have a much deeper, in-depth conversation on, on the podcast. So look forward to this being a topic that we're going to talk about tonight with all of you, uh, live at 7.30 p.m., but also look forward to us talking about this on the podcast with a group of guests, because I, I think this is a... This is a fairly big deal, right? Like, Nintendo's being successful at something they previously weren't successful at. And that is noteworthy, at least. All right, guys. The ninjas are at work. Watch out out there if you're trying to make an emulator. Catch you guys in the next video.